three, two, one, and just like that, we are back. This is Le Pedret Garage, les amis. Uh, this is me, Frenchy Frankie, The Pedret. Welcome back in the garage. This show has been running for, I would say, since March uh, 2020, when we all got hit by the pandemic. But we're not here to talk about this today. The, the garage is international. I'm going to see you can drop your comment, and we're going to go see who is our guest today. Are you guys ready for this? Let's go for an hour and talking about surveying. Check, 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 Mike. One, two, one, two. So, guys, who's in the garage today? Let's find out. Hi, guys. This is Jeremy Flores. Uh, I'll be live on Pedland's Garage on November 4th. Uh, see you there on Riders TV. Here we go, just like that, as magic with the internet. Thank you so much, Jeremy. We're live now with Tahiti. Bonjour. Yaurana. Hey, how are you? Yaurana. So two French guys going to speak in English is going to be kind of awkward, but let's do this. <laughs> yeah, let's try. So, well, first, uh, I want to take some news about your, um, how, how can I say, your wife, your partner, the mom of your daughter. Uh, yeah, everything's good. Uh, it's a little bit uh, intense at the moment because we're waiting, and the the term, uh, you know, we go, we could we could be having a second kid any any minute now. Uh, so we've been uh, we've been waiting every day. Couple false alert, and uh, just on standby. So yeah, pretty excited to to welcome the new the new the new little boy in uh, in our family. How is she doing? Is she all right? She's gonna be hang on for an hour. I don't want to be in trouble. <laughs> no, no, she's okay. She's okay for now. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, uh, I'm I'm completely crazy about my daughter. She's three years old now. Uh, best thing that's ever happened to me. So now having a little boy is uh, is uh, is gonna be really interesting, and I'm really excited. A little boy, trouble. Mimi, yeah. uh, well, Jeremy, thank you so much. If you guys are live, we're with one of the most French iconic stuffer that we had on tour. He just got retired, but we're not going to talk about this. It's not time to retiring. We're going to talk about this. We have so many questions. Live in the garage, Martin Dacuna from Paris said, oh my gosh, the garage is back. Here we go. Look, I can, I can, I, this is so magic. I can even pull her name, see? And her commentary right there. Um, Le Garage, c'est de la balle. We're going to speak French as well. Cyril Castre from Serge Chevalier, the snowboarder is here in the garage as well and say hi. A big up from Serge. Uh, L'égalité, uh, égalité, fraternité. She's a crazy fan of Karin Ruby snowboarding. There's a lot of snowboarders. I wonder why. Bonsoir, les amis. Uh, Jeannot from Chamonix, another snowboarder. Guys, we're going to talk about surfing today. Where are you? Uh, big up mm -hmm. from Chamonix. Um, and that's it. And everyone's coming up. All right. So have you seen, I mean, what's going on with all the riders? Um, Kai Laney is expecting twins as well. Yeah. Are you there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard he's expecting twins. That's pretty crazy. I saw that uh, um, he got a wave at Jaws yesterday and he had the, the pink uh, smoke. Well, so, look, uh, I, I, I have it. I have it. I, I it's right there. <laughs> uh, well, what a great... What, I mean, what do you expect from Thailand? Were you thinking of doing something so crazy like this? I think it's cool. I think it's different. And uh, it's definitely... He does stuff like that, you know? So he's a freak, freak of nature. <laughs> Gets barrel. <laughs> Add jaws with a pink yeah. uh, thing in his hand. That's pretty cool. Chilling, chilling on Joe's, uh, beyond happy. Of course, when you're Kaylini, you do think big. He's expecting twins. What would be your face if you were uh, going to have twins? <laughs> you already have one. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's big news and pretty big organization in your life, I guess. Because, uh, I mean, I have one and it's, it's a huge organization. So having two at the same time, wow. But, I mean, in the long term, it can be amazing. So really happy for him. 
So have you been doing Mr. Flores since uh, you announced? We followed you the last time we saw you competing was Tokyo, the Olympics. And then we saw you lately in uh, Osagor back on the victory field for last lap and doing a big celebration. How is it going? Pressure of the shoulder is gone. Yeah, it, uh, it's a big relief. Uh, many, many years of uh, competing. Uh, you know, competing at the high level is always, uh, it's, it's intense. It takes a lot of energy. Uh, it's, uh, it's nonstop. It's a crazy lifestyle. You know, I guess it's like uh, every, uh, every uh, you know, high level sport, except surfing is even more intense because we, we're on the road pretty much all year long. It's a crazy uh, schedule, like nonstop uh weeks after weeks we're going to places uh so we spend away we spend a lot of time away from our family our, our loved ones uh our home so you know 15 years on the world tour um i had some amazing years definitely definitely uh, uh everything that i've dreamed of and um and now i'm i'm just i'm i'm really happy and excited about this new new chapter because uh, i i think i gave it all in the in the competitive surfing i gave everything that i could give and um now i'm excited to to try different things do different things and um and yeah i'm done with points schedules and judges and you know trying to impress and stuff i want to impress myself i want to impress my friends I want to go on surf trips, do some nice, uh, nice, uh, you know, footage and uh, get back to the roots of surfing, which is what, you know, the reason why we all started surfing uh, is uh, we started surfing because it's like a, it's just a cool, fun thing. When you're a kid, you go with your friend and, you, you know, you talk stories, you talk shit and you share waves and you laugh and you you, you impress your friends. And, uh, and, you know, when you're on tour, you kind of lose that, you lose that, that, that roots, you know, that, that pure, uh, that pure, uh, you know, that pure feeling of surfing. So I'm really looking forward to go to, you know, new adventures, new places with, uh, with a couple friends and, uh, and hopefully, you know, I'm thinking maybe do a couple of documentaries or film and stuff so that I can share all these moments with people that are not as lucky as me and as, as lucky as, uh, to go, uh, to go on surf trips. Well, here we go. Jeremy Flores is in the garage. Everyone is coming right now. Everyone is like saying congratulations for everything you accomplished. And um, the French Federation of Surfing just did um, a little cut that I propose that we watch together. Um, it's, it's kind of cool and let's enjoy it. The way I grew up is always tell the truth and being honest. I think I'm really blessed with the life I have. <laughs> <laughs> At 12 or 13, to me, he looked like a little Tom Curran. Jeremy's definitely been my favorite surfer to watch on tour. You won Fran, Chopu, Pipe Masters twice, and the best one of all, my brother's award, Tahiti. The ISP took me out of the event. He's not scared to tell the judges where to stick it. He's been fine probably more than anyone on tour. You've had an amazing run, I tell you that. Now we can go on surf trips. Our dude. <laughs> what a tribute. So let's go back to this. We heard some words, heavy words from Kelly Slater, 11 times world champion, I believe, who said he looks like to me a little Tom Curran. That is the word. Yeah, I, that's a huge honor, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I look like Tom Curran, but a uh, huge honor. But Tom Curran is legendary statue, is uh, next level. So I, I definitely don't, com don't consider myself in the same category. <laughs> Look, we have some people coming. You come from La Réunion and Christian Casado say, I'm going to speak French for a second. Salut de La Réunion, Jérémy. Tu reviens quand chez papa? Hi from Réunion Island. Where are you coming back uh, to your daddy's home? Alors, je, yeah, I, I want to go back. I want to go back real quick. I was actually thinking about that today, this morning, as I wake up. I really miss my island. I haven't been back for a few years. Just I uh, couldn't. Just my schedule and everything uh, just didn't allow me to go back. Um, 
but this year I really want to go out in the next few months. You know, I want to go back to Reunion. I miss my island. That's where my heart is. And uh, I want to go back to see my, some, some of my family, my friends. Um, I really miss my island. I miss, I miss Reunion. Some other message coming in. You have a lot of love, Jeremy. Martin Dacuna say hello to Peyo Lizarazu. He's in the chat. Peyo, um, hey, bro, we did the Carnet de la Glisse together. You want to say a few words to Peyo? He's watching it. Yeah, Peyo. Peyo is my good friend. He's like a big brother. Uh, when I first uh, started uh, getting sponsored by Quicksilver, he was the team manager back then. And uh, he took me to some amazing trips. He took me to Hawaii. That's one of the main ones. We went to Kauai. We went to Maui. We were the legend uh, Jeff Hackman in Kauai. Uh, we spent time with uh, Dave Kalama and Maui. Uh, I was just a kid. That was uh, I was just I had stars in my eyes, and uh, that this is moments that I'll never forget. Uh, sharing, and Peyo took me there, he introduced me to all these legends. So yeah, I'll never forget that, and I'll, I'll always be thankful to 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 Peyo Lisa Azu and uh, everything that is, you know, that is uh, shared with me. This is the love of surfing to Depeyo on Tambras, bien sûr. Um, in, in this video, we hear like Bruce Iron, the brother of Andy. Those two guys were two big names in, back in the days. Uh, he's saying that you won the most four iconic wa um, I mean, waves on the world tour, which is true. I mean, you started with uh, in Hawaii on the North Shore with, I mean, the main event, then twice. And then after that, Tahiti, Teopo, and then... La Gravière, and I know already the answer, but we're going to talk about that. Uh, also, Kelly Slater is mentioning something. Uh, you got in trouble a couple of times, and uh, we can laugh about it now. And he said that you're probably one of the most, the surfer got most spine. Is that true? Yeah, I heard, I heard I'm, I'm actually pretty <laughs> tight, kind of tight with my brother, Sonny Garcia. So I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> in a way, you know, it's kind of like a funny thing. But I mean, you know, there's, there's, there is there's there is some things that I'm not proud of that I've uh, I've done in my career. But that is okay. <laughs> there is other things that I actually really don't regret because it had to come out. And uh, yeah, you know, it's it's uh, I have a strong character, and um, sometimes you just have to let it go. But uh, at the end, you know, I, I have respect for for a lot of these people. Uh, everyone at the WCL, ASP, there's actually people think I'm like. A, I don't get along with WSL and ISP and stuff, but there's actually, there's a few person and there's a few people in the WSL and in the ISP that I, I respect a lot. And after all these years become really, uh, really good friends. So I'm, I'm not, you know, I might not be, um, I'm not, I might not be uh, okay with the system, but I actually respect a lot of the, the guys that have been working for so long in the WSL uh doing some great things um it's it's been involving a lot and um yes so big respect and uh i'll never be that guy that that's gonna you know after i retire that's gonna talk talk bad things and talk shit about uh about that myself <laughs> just by respect well of, you're, um, you're you're dad now you can't do that anyway <laughs> i i can still i can still say it and i trust me i'll say it whenever whenever i feel oh, like we knew that <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh but i always uh yeah that's definitely i always tell people people like oh the bcl jeremy this and that i'm like guys you know like i'm not an enemy of the WCL at all that you know why because It's part of uh, part of my uh, part of my life, part of my career, part of who I am today, also. And uh, and there is I have some amazing friends in the WSL that uh, that that's helped me a lot. Uh, you know, in the staff, you know, the camera guys, like you know, just not not necessarily the the, the big 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 guys at the WSL, uh, but just people that have been working for many years. So huge respect for them and. Uh, And you know, when on my last event in Mexico, we spent time with uh, with a lot of the a lot of the guys from WCL. We had some we shared some beers and shared some stories, and it was great. Look, look, look! What I have for you, you can say shit. What happened in the garage? Stay in the garage. Yeah. Amen. To the baby who's coming. So uh, it's a baby boy, right? Yeah, baby boy. Are you excited about this? Because we know, we saw, we see your little girl. She was there when you win the Pro France in 2018. How old is she now? Three years old? She's three, yeah. What a character. It, the, you started when you were three years old. Uh, has she ever started to be taking some uh, little waves? Yeah, well, I take her surfing sometimes. Uh, you know, she's, she's still not hooked. 
you know i uh, i i just i don't push her whenever she wants to write some waves i'll take her write some waves sometimes she wants to stand up sometimes she does it uh, i'm always like stand up stand up <laughs> but i can't force because uh, I don't, i'm just letting her do do her thing and uh, if one day she's like dad let's go surf and actually ride some real waves and then i'll be stoked but till then i'll be waiting Well, we're going to kiss her. Hinae, what does that mean in Tahitian? I do believe that's a meaning, Hinae. Uh, Hinae, Hina, Hina used to be a, a queen, a goddess of a, in the Poly, uh, Polynesian uh, 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 stories, history. Uh, and uh, he, and uh, he means uh, crown. So in Hawaiian, you say lei. In uh, Tahitian, you say hey. So yeah, it's a, she, she's, a, she's already a little princess. <laughs> Are you are you a girl's dad? Fully, huh? You're yeah, fully. Young. fully. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait for trouble with dream. the baby boy. Yeah, I always dreamed of having a of having a, a girl. Even before I was dad, for some reason, I, I always knew I was gonna have a girl. And uh, so when I had a girl, it wasn't a surprise, and I was actually really happy. Well, in I, French, I, we say le choix du roi, boy and yeah. girl. Are you gonna stop there? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. How, we'll see. We'll see how we go with two. Okay, we, see we're gonna how, say hi to uh, who's coming in the garage. We have a lot of people. You have a lot of love. Uh, there is Laurent Gay, another snowboard legend. I mean, what's going on, guys? We're talking about surfing, but thank you. Welcome into the garage, uh, Laurent Gay. On fait des gros bisous. Benoît Panidis. Hey, everyone. Uh, Jano from Chamonix. Say Andy and Bruce uh, was riding uh, original sin snowboard as well. Guys, I know you're craving for snowboarding, but today it's Jeremy Flores. Another snowboarder. What's going on? Guillaume Chastagnol. Salut, Jeremy. On s'est croisé dans un skate park quand j'avais 16 ans. Puis à Moréa, on tubait toute la matinée avec les poteaux. Et oui, Guillaume Chastagnol, who was a snowboard legend, who is actually the first French guy who won the X game. He used to live in Wainé and Moréa. You know him? You met him, right? Yeah, yeah. We met a we, we met, met long time ago. <laughs> hey Shasta, you're gonna be uh, one of the garagists as well. Uh, Flory Marion, who is from Les Landes, merci à Jérémy d'encourager la nouvelle génération. Thank you, uh, Marion, for that big up to encourage uh, the new generation coming up. And the new generation is about to pop up in the tummy of your wife. <laughs> yeah. What 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 would happen if Inae or your little boy coming up? coming to you and want to embrace your career. Like, I mean, this is déjà vu with Patrick Flores, your dad, who used to be one of the Tonton surfers in La Réunion. He did bodyboard and he did uh, all those uh, ch French championship and everything. And he pushed you on a wave when you were three years old and he lost all his hair, gray hair, after so many years on the world tour, <laughs> watching you. I will never forget Costa Rica. But what would you do? Would you? Would you like give a golf club to them? Say, hey, let's do, let's do golf. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know what? Right now, I think we're living in a in a we're in a moment of kind of a, like a crisis in surfing. It's tough to be a professional surfer today. Uh, there was some moments uh, 10, 15 years ago where there was a window where there was actually a lot of space for um for surfers to you know to make a living a good living of surfing right now it's getting tough especially with the new system and everything it's it's especially for the europeans it's getting really hard um that's why i'm coming back from you know i feel like the system sometimes is not fair um but you know if my kids one day tell me i want to be a professional surfer uh, and they love it I'll, I'll, of course, I'll push them, you know, I'll be behind them and I'll encourage them, but I'll definitely won't make them do that because I, I feel like, I feel like it's really tough. It's tough to go to get to the high, uh, highest level. It's really hard. Uh, but if they do want to, I'll, I'll tell them that if they're willing to make a lot of sacrifices, because you have to do a lot of sacrifices and a lot of hard work to get to the high level, then I'll be hundred percent with them. There is a lot of snowboarders in the chat and they're all in love with your legacy and everything. Pascal Gombert as well, just right now, one of the biggest uh, photographers, skateboarder as well. And musician is there. Um, let's talk a few seconds about snowboarding like this. We're going to make them happy. Do you remember the last time you went snowboarding? Because you are a snowboarder. <laughs> oh, no, I, you know what? I, I, I like to think I'm a snowboarder, but 
I remember the well, first question. Time. Do you like it? Do you like to snowboard? I know you don't have time. You didn't have time that much for so I many love, years. I love snowboarding, but I hate watching myself snowboard. Rule number oh, one. Too <laughs> bad. Too bad. But, Too when, bad when I, about that. Too bad. Oh my God. <laughs> Look what I got. Le garage. Here we go, Jeremy Flores. Do you remember that moment? That was the first time, actually. That the was your first, first time. time. Can you believe that, guys? Guillaume Chastagnol, Pascal Gombert, Jano from Chamonix. Look at this. Uh, look at this backside and front side in Nepal. It's it's solid, dude. You're 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 uh, you're sending those slash. You were so young. This is 2009 with uh, Bernard Crepel, the father of another legend, uh, um, uh, Mathieu Crepel, who is about to take off, by the way, for La Transat Jack Vab, Crazy Adventure. We'll have him on the garage. And look who is behind. Look who is behind. Etoile du Sport with Maxime Usno. Yes. What a road you went on, guys. Etoile du Sport, a few seconds. It's a concept in La Plagne. Uh, all the athletes, the, the, the established athletes, like world champion, Olympic champion, bring, bring on stage uh, the newcomer. You were the star at that time already, and you brought, um, I would say, um, Maxime Usno. And Maxime Usno came, and it's topics, you guys having breakfast with all sports athletes um, and your sharing experience and everything. You know what happened that day, Mimi? We we made that interview. It was for the show that we used to do on the Orange Port, Carnet de la Glisse. And we, you didn't win yet. Um, uh, Pipe Masters. The yeah. Pipe Masters. Yeah. And we told you this, said, watch, most of the athletes who come on Etoile du Sport, the next year they take off. The next year with, uh, with uh, Mr. Mickey Picon at the bar, it's 10 p.m., And who's gonna freaking claim the freaking trophy of Pipe Master, Mr. Flores? <laughs> How unbelievable that was! Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Uh, definitely, the, the concept of uh, Les Etoiles du Sport is an amazing concept because I, I you know, I, I was I've always been a big fan of every sport. Uh, I, I, you know, I, all my career, I look at every other sport, you know, no matter what sport it is, you know, it could be rugby, it could be tennis, soccer. I mean, snowboard and stuff. And um, and I try to, I, I like to spend time with all these all these guys, all these professionals and talk stories and talk about different things. Even though we do different, completely different sports, um, you know, we have the same mindset and the same motivation and we, we, we're doing the same uh, trainings and sa same sacrifices, uh, spend a lot of time away from our family, our loved ones. So, um, so I, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And um That this concept is amazing and winning the pipe masters that first time at pipe was uh it was like a huge relief because it's the one event that every surfer dream of winning you know it's like a, our wimbledon of surfing you know uh so yeah to have my name on that legendary trophy next to all the legendary names and put the french flag on the highest uh you know on the, on the podium Uh, was, uh, and was play La Marseillaise in Hawaii, please, on the North Shore. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that was a really proud moment. And uh, that was like, uh, you know, it was a huge relief for me too because all my career at this point, there was a lot of pressure, you know, people saying I'm the next one, I'm the ne next big things, next world champ or whatever it is. And I felt like winning this event, I've, I achieved something really important. And uh, so I was like, okay, all this wasn't for nothing. Now, whatever happened in my life, in my career now, at least I have a pipe master. So it was like, all right, now it's bonus. <laughs> Not only one, but twice, uh, 2010 yeah. and 2017, if I'm correct. Yes, right, correct. The 2017 and actually was the, was, 2010 was a huge moment, huge relief, proud, you know. But 2017 was even harder because, because obviously the level has gone up. Um, well, that's, where, that's when that's when the two generation mixed together. The new generation of those kids, yeah. all the Brazilian, doing all the hairs and stuff like that, and yeah, yeah. And, and there was a world title content, content, contenders with me uh, on my road. You know, there was a lot of talk between John John and Medina, and I had both these guys on, on the in my heats. I beat Medina in the quarterfinal, so he lost the world title, and then semifinal, and in the final was against John John, who is you know, the best, you know, obviously the best local uh, worldwide, best surfers at Pipe Backdoor. 
and I was I was and beating him on his beach in the final in the last seconds. I mean, that's like a dream scenario. Um, so yeah, I think the 2017 one was uh, was was more special and much harder to win. As much as 2010 was amazing because I beat Kelly in the semi semi final, and Kelly at that time was uh, unbeatable. Uh, so yeah, some crazy stories. When I think about it now, it's like uh, everything is like blurry because I was so concentrated in my bubble, you know, that um, like even the next day I wake up and I was like, wow, amazing and stuff. I had like stars uh, in my eyes. And then I was like, I didn't really remember what happened because, you know, you're so focused and so, so like uh, focused and like in relation, like with nature and the ocean and stuff, because surfing is all about that too. If you have that connection with, with the ocean, it's not about just surfing good or surfing well. It's about having that luck and that connection with, uh, with the waves and everything. And uh, so it's, it's crazy. It's like almost, um, it's weird to say, but it's almost spiritual, you know? It's, yeah, uh, for sure. It's, surfing yeah, is yeah, almost I mean, spiritual. For the, for the audience, as far as there is many snowboarders, we're going to bring back the legacy. I mean, when are we going to see a documentary series on Netflix about your life? You started surfing at three years old. You came up on tour after winning the WKS, which is uh, the qualification uh, tour for the World Tour. You were 16 when you pop up. And that day, you got a wild card at Quicksilver Pro France. I know you kind of hate it talking about this over and over. But that day, you're going to knock off almost. I mean, you did Mick Fanning. And then uh, Mick Fanning was on that year was 2007, I believe. Uh, I think so. Yeah. 2007. Like that. You, are, yeah. you have a white card, what, what, which means like you got invited. And, this, and, and at that time, you're not like the guy you are now. You were like so little. You come in those huge waves of La Gaviere. And Mick Fanning is about to clinch for Rip Curl the second world title i believe and who's gonna uh, knock him off I Mr. Think Flores. Was, <laughs> yeah, and i think he was going for the first world title and he was in contention with andy and kelly so it was between kelly andy and mick and i mean for me as a kid i had a quicksilver gave me this wild card and i was like it was a dream just to be out there with my my idols you know and la gravière was as good as it gets it was solid pretty big waves and, uh, and yeah, that was my first real connection with the French public, with the French fans on the beach, because I won the, in the second round as a wild card. I, ran, I, I beat Mick Fanning in the, in the dying minutes and the, the crowd was packed. It was full. The, you know, the, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. It was a sunny day, you know, typical Gravier, Quicksilver Pro France, like we, la like we love them. And uh, I beat, uh, yeah, and that was my first real connection with the French with the French people, the French fans to actually like, I was like, okay, like I, li I love this. You know, I love this connection. I love this fire. It was firing me up. So it was, it was a good. And in the third round, I surfed against Kelly. And uh, waves were big. It was as big as La Gavia can get. It was really solid. And I started the heat, I think with a 9.5 or something. I was like, whoa, against Kelly. And then of course he got like a 9.8. So he came back. <laughs> And he and he, uh, he came back and beat me because he's the he's the king, you know. But I had a I had a good run and I was really proud of. Uh, hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. How come, uh, Mr. Flores? Um, you got I I don't even I don't know if uh, WSL count the wave you get scored on tour uh, since you're 16 years old. Um, I'm not gonna ask you how old are you right now. It's not the question, but you took you took so many waves being scored, and you do remember the score that Kelly did in 2007. Yeah, yeah, I remember a lot of scores. You know, there's some special <laughs> hits and some special scores that you'll never forget. That's for sure. Oh my goodness! Well, fast forward, uh, European champion, really quick, and you're gonna jump into the crowd of the dream tour. What's gonna happen to be not that such a dream tour? Because when you're young, far away from family and everything, and being in hotel every day, I mean, it's a dream, but it's it's. It's mental, like it's you need to be prepared, and th that's part of the competition, correct? Yes, of course. Uh, the thing is, I started super young, so the idea was to to really. I mean, I didn't expect to qualify at 17 years old at all. That wasn't part of the plan. The plan was to start the QS at 16, you know, take some experience, uh, and then and then hopefully qualify for the World Tour, you know, when I was like 20 or something. That was kind of more like it. 
And then uh, on my first real year on the QS, I won the QS and I was shocked. I was shocked. And I think a lot of people were shocked and myself like included. I, I didn't really know what to expect. I was like, okay, now I'm on the world tour. Are you kidding? I'm 17. I'm going to be surfing on the world tour events, like something that, you know, it's like way more of a dream that I could possibly uh, dream. Um, but I had a lot of pressure too, because a lot of people were saying maybe it's fluke and me, you know, a lot of people knew I won the QS. So the QS usually has a lot of small waves. So I was at that point, I was really fast and I was, I was, I was really good in small wave, but, not many people knew my game in the in the bigger stuff, uh, so I had a lot to prove. And um, and something that I always loved is the challenge, and I love that challenge of uh, people saying that I wasn't capable. People saying, "Oh, he's too, he's not powerful enough. He's too small. He's too skinny. His big wave stuff is not as not good enough. He's just gonna be a punching bag. He's gonna be he's gonna get smoked on the world tour." And I actually, you know, this was like firing me up inside, and I had a lot to prove. So on my first year, I, I started beating all my idols. And I was, I was so surprised, to be honest. Now I can say at the time I was really proud. So I, I, I was acting like I knew what I was doing and I was confident. But I tell you right now, I was shocked that I was beating guys like <laughs> Kelly Slater or CJ Hogood or, you know, like all these legends. I well, those believe. big names were huge. Yeah. I mean, now the big names are building up. But I mean, at that time it was like the top 15 was scary to surf against. Seriously, yeah. Back then, it was like the top fifteen or top ten was pretty much like you Number had like eighty <laughs> percent chance of not beating them. You know, like like because their high seed and back then the high seed were really helped with their name by the judges to be the highest to to get the highest score, and that was reality. And uh, so for us, with the low seed and low on the ranking, to beat these guys, we had to serve two hundred percent. You know, we had to make it clear. If it was even, there's no way that, it, it, that was your turn. Nowadays, it's a lot different. Nowadays, it's kind of more fair and, you know, there's kind of like big mix. So the last guy on the ranking now can beat the first guy on the ranking. It happens all the time. But back then, it used to ne like rarely happen. That is so awesome. Uh, Mimi, you've been one of the garagists of the first generation. How do you think this is? Look at this interface. It's it's just unbelievable. I want to say a big up, uh, send a big up and so much love to uh, all the guys behind this garage, the new generation. We're live on all the pages on Facebook, on the Pedret Garage. Uh, we're live on on Twitch. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Apple TV. We're live on Roku. And we're going to bring and share the love of action sport thanks to Riders TV. And thank you so much for being the first guest on Riders TV. And then thank you so much to... They can't go behind it. The OT, OT. I know. Um, there is a lot of people in the chat that want to send, send you love. Pascal Gombert, Jeannot from Chamonix, Michel Vandrel, uh, Karine Defos, welcome back. Yes, of course. Uh, Jean-Emmanuel Sens. Coucou, Mimi. Mimi, is that your nickname? Do you still like your, this nickname? Does you, I, <laughs> I, I take I take whatever. Mimi is <laughs> that was a nickname my mom used to give me when I was a kid, Aww. and it stayed. So. Well, and 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 we took it. <laughs> uh, it makes me feel good, so I like it. Okay, uh, Shastanyo is still in the place. Everyone is in the place. So big up and thank you so much for following us on Riders TV today. We're launching. Um, like Tony Hawk episode, uh, I don't know if you saw it, Jeremy, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. We went to see Tony Hawk at his warehouse. Do you skateboard? Because I know you have the mini ramp at the uh, Jeremy Flores Factory Fantasy. And you I skate. skate. I'm actually really bad. I wish I skated. I started skating young, but uh, I was skating when I was really little and I used to get hurt. And uh, my dad's like, stop skating because, you know, if you want to be a surfer, you can't just have ankle problems and stuff because you won't be able to surf. Uh, so I'm really I actually I'm, re I'm actually really bad at skating. But I did uh, start a concept. Uh, it's the Jeremy Flores Fantasy Factory. So I bought a big uh, a warehouse and I made a skate ramp with foam pits, uh, you know, uh, so you can really launch backside front side and really work on your air, air game so it was and this is how you cool. work your because you're doing the as far as there's many snowboarders in the in the waves your signature uh to compete with the new generation because we we know your style is like big waves and uh, deep cover and everything and and for sure a tube killer 
uh, you've been improving a lot with your tricks, the kind of rodeo thing, which is like a rodeo front, like uh, leaning in the wave and standing yeah. it. It's become your signature. This is how you practice with your skateboard on your ramp on the phone? Well, this is one of them, but uh, you know what? I wish I had this skate, skateboard ramp foam pits way earlier because when I started having this foam pit, I was already it was already kind of too late for me. Um, I used to do, you know, when I was a kid, I used to love trying airs. I used to be doing a lot of airs, uh, but back then, uh, airs went scoring. So it wasn't the main thing, you know? And for me, I was like, okay, I was doing, my training was about winning hits. And back then when you used to do an air, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, you weren't winning hits. So I stopped and then, and then it was too late because, uh, I started having a lot of injuries a lot of ankles and knee problems. So I just stopped doing airs. And when I wanted to start, when, you know, when the, when the, 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 the judging criteria changed and they started scoring big airs, I tried to do again and I couldn't do it anymore. So I, wish I, had this, uh, I wish I had this foam pit uh, a few years before. But I tell you what, there's a lot of kids that are actually training in my facility and uh, their parents and their coach always come up to me and are really thankful. Uh, it's crazy to see these kids can do air reverses before they can even do a cutback. And so they reproduce the movement, you know, the in the air. So it's a skateboard, of course, but the, the movement and the arm move placements and the, the eyes and the, the, the look and everything is the same. It's the same idea, you know. So they're actually uh, all these kids. I actually see a lot of these kids training in the, in the in the, on the ramp on the foam pit, and it's crazy to see them in the water like the next day, and they're doing all these airs, and they can't even they, they're not even as good as doing like normal cutbacks and stuff. But all of a sudden they do this full rotation. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, skateboarding helps for sure. Look in the garage, Mathieu Stondobé, Bordeaux, hola, uh, viva le Jérém, of course. A ton of love for you, Jérémy, today. Many surfers as well coming and joining. Uh, La Réunion represent, we're sending a ton of kisses. How is the situation really quick and not going too deep into politics? The situation with the shark over there getting better? Uh, it's getting a little bit better. Uh, the, the problem in the past few years is it's became a, a political problem uh, issue, of course. You know, uh, everything that's becoming serious uh, becomes political and political means money issues and all that and business and stuff, which is a shame because uh, because uh, the, the idea was to, you know, really work together and uh, to, to, to find a solution for to 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 really have a. Um, to really come back to, to, to the roots and come back to having, you know, our, our child and our new generation and kids spending time in the ocean um, and, you know, fish, uh, uh, having spaces for fishermen, spaces, uh, spaces for, sur for the surfers and the swimmers and the kids. And of course, spaces for the, for the, for the, 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 the all the species, all the uh, fish species and shark species and, and, and all. So it's it was a big issue, but uh, fortunately there is a store in Rainian, a lot of people doing some hard work uh, to make uh, the situation involve. And uh, right now, you know, we have uh, we have uh, we have some we have uh, more and more surfers going back in the ocean, swimmers and kids in security. So there's a lot of uh, it's it's I think it's on the right track. Awesome, I hope so because I mean surfing without surfing in la reunion i feel bad for all the kids and the tourists and everything and 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 we need that back of course the sharks are their place in the ocean that's not the topic and we don't want to get deeper into that because otherwise boom boom mm -hmm. uh a lot of people in the garage uh, benoit panidis rock food moustache night represent mimi of course um we were talking about skateboarding you were um i mean you are still in the team with quicksilver and he was in the team as well you know that guy Yeah, Tony Hawk, of course, legend. <laughs> well, legend. the show is on. We started Total Freestyle with Tony Hawk. You can watch it on Riders TV right now. It's on. It's completely free. And if you go on Instagram, you watch the show first, and there is a question about Fresh Dirt, the segment. If you tag the people with about Fresh Dirt and tag three friends, next week in the garage, I'll be personally sending you Tony Hawk skateboard. How about that? Would you like one, Mimi? Look, I want to play. The, I'll, I'll be, I'll be tagging three friends because I would love to have one. <laughs> oh, really? Well, we can. You, you, you have his cell phone, correct? 
<laughs> yeah, I'll just say I have it, but no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony is like 53 years old. He's sending so much, like as much as Kelly Slater. You just retired. The Kelly is still on tour. Uh, this is, does it feel weird to you? <laughs> You know, there's a certain humans on this earth that are just not like everyone else. And Kelly and Tony Hawk are definitely one of them. They're just special, you know, freak, freakish, special. And uh, I have huge respect for them. Yep, 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 yep. Um, look, we were talking about Tony Hawk. What about watching? The, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you um, the desire to go see it. Uh, let's go see now um, the... In California, it's time for Total Freestyle with my friend Pedro. Here we go. Check it out. Oh my gosh, that song. Such a classic from Tony Hawk Skateboarding. Well, here we are at Tony Hawk's Warehouse, the most iconic skateboarder in the world, but everybody knows that, right? Well, Riders TV has a few questions for him. Total Freestyle. Here we go. Hey, thank you so much for watching Total Freestyle. It's giveaway time and look what I have in my hands right there. An authentic sign Tony Hawk's board. Thank you, Tony. Now the question is, how can you get this board home? Well, quick and easy. Go to Riders TV's Instagram on the post promoting Total Freestyle. Answer the easy question and tag three friends. Make sure to follow me as well. Maybe one of these boards is yours. Who knows? Total Freestyle. See you soon. Voila, we spent quite some time with this segment. Uh, Tony Hawk is the guest on Riders TV the entire month. Every week, we're not going to make win one board, Mimi. You have three chances, four chances to win a board because we're going to make uh, this contest live. And this is what it's about to launch uh, Riders TV, which is on Apple TV, Roku, everywhere. This is going to be the new bedroom in your pocket talking about action sport. Uh, lining up, you know, we, ha we have Laird Hamilton coming in. We have Roberta Mancino uh, coming in, the, the crazy wing shooter. Uh, we have, who else do we have? We have so many guests. And we're going to talk about Louis de la Glisse. Have you heard about Louis de la Glisse? I've heard some. Yeah, I've heard. I've never seen anything, but I've heard it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a cool concept. Yes, it is. It's been running for 40 years. And I will show you this at the end because we're going to make today, right now, live, thanks to uh, Riders TV and Jeremy Flores, a nice gift talking about if you listen. We're going to see if you listen quite well. The chat we've been doing now for 42 minutes. We have like 15 minutes left to go over. And we're going to make an amazing gift. We were talking about snowboarding. Look, This is the gift we're going to make you today. So stay tuned and listen carefully to everything. Uh, you snowboard and then all the snowboarders going to, it's a game changer. It's like um, an audio kit for listening to music while you're writing. But if you get a call, you can answer. But you can chat with the people right in front and back. And this is what the garage been doing. It's completely free. These people were in the garage and say, we want to make a gift to you. So this is what we're going to make you win, guys. Hey, something's missing, huh? One of the best days, man. One another best day. The view is amazing! All right, here we go. All right, guys, follow me. We're going this way, right here. Nice turn. Yeah, I'm catching up, I'm catching up. Here I come, all right. Go fast. Pretty amazing. Look to your left, man. What a view. Oh my God, what a session. Best snow ever. So here we go. We're going to play time. It's play time now with Jeremy Flores. If you listen to the show, you can Google. You can, uh, the first one in the chat right at this second is about to win a, a value of like $500 gift with two sets. Would you be interested, Mimi, to, they're working on a technology to go on the water? Would, would that be fun uh, when you do stop at all and you have that set and you can talk, listen to music, take your calls? Yeah, that would be cool. That would be awesome. I actually like, uh, I like to, especially in Tahiti, uh, I like to go uh, paddle. And, yeah. Uh, to have uh, some music and stuff, that would be, that would be great. That would be a well, great, great idea. I know it's not your birthday yet, but from the Pedret Garage, we would like to send you to Tahiti. Uh, two sets for you and uh, Inae. When you, also, when you go on a bike ride, Boom, baby, baby girl. 
Come here, look at the jump and everything. So this is going to come into you and uh, Cardo System. So right now, here's a question. And I know you freaking love the competition. The first one, and Mini and I is going to watch who's going to win. Here is the question. Are you guys ready? The rules is very simple. We don't want any mistake type of things. The first one, who's going to name the four events that Jeremy Flores won in his career, the big title on the World Tour, will get the two sets. How about that? So let's go. Uh, let's see who's going to win this. Look at this. We're going to play this again. And that's it. So... Hey, something's uh, missing, huh? uh, we'll One the of the best days, of man. One another best voilà. day. And we're going to see. Uh, Jeremy, you want to give some clues? So, Claude Vallier. Oh, yeah, good food. <laughs> Benoit Panidis is trying to cheat. Christian Choupin is here. Christian Choupin, let's play uh, for the two sets, guys. I'm asking you to win those two sets of Cardo Snow. The first one is going to name the four events, but please say it in the same comment. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So the first person who's going to name the four main events that Jeremy Flores win, which is actually the most four iconic waves in the world on the world tour. Jeremy, you want to give some clues? <laughs> uh, can I play? <laughs> you, you, well, you already won. Uh, it's on your way already. Somebody is walking to your house now. This is it. This yeah, is the guy, bro. Oh, uh, well, let's say uh, it's uh, Island Vibes. Mm -hmm. and sure. French vibes. <laughs> okay, so uh, Benoit Panidis, Christian Choupin, guys, Damien Pompier, everyone, if you want to play, look, Christian just found one, but there is a mistake. If you write Quicksilver with a CK, that doesn't work. It's a $500 gift, so get it right. Get it right. The four main event in the same comment. I don't want you to say one there and one there, otherwise I cannot pick you, dude. So write it the four event and we're gonna go see what's going on is there mr patrick flores somewhere the coach of the national team is he with you uh he's in tahiti he actually came with my mom uh they here uh they they came for a, a few weeks so that they, they can uh hopefully uh see the the, the see, see a, a new kid look at this do you know that guy this is a legend who came on the garage right now, Steve Graham. Huge, big name, pioneer of freestyle. Steve is in Hawaii. Hello, Steve. So, Steve, play again. Pipe Masters, you got it. Taravua, no, this is a Fiji. And Osagor, uh, we need the name of the event, which is, you know it. And <laughs> South Africa. So, we're, you, have one on, you have two on, on, on four, Steve. Play again. Same player shoot again. Do it. Is the actually the only one who put like the four events, but they're not correct. Correct? <laughs> do you do you see the do, do you see the commenter, um, Jeremy, when I put it on? Yeah, yeah, I see it. So we have another one. Benoit Panidis proposed triple crown Hawaii Creek Pro Osegor Teaupo Tahiti contest. We cannot accept that, but there is some good answer right there, right, Jeremy? There's a few good answers, but. Ah, uh, shoot again, the, Benoit Panidis. I never won the, I never won the triple crown. Sorry. You wish, huh? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> well, you, you might get a, a wild card. Uh, are you going to get, if, if, is it, this is it. That was my question. Are you going to grab one of the wild card that is going to be like Tahiti home, uh, which is going to be the site of the Olympics, by the way, or maybe Osegor and Quick Pro France, Quicksilver will might give you an invitation. Yeah, why not? You know, as long as I don't uh, take uh, some uh, some kids' spot, you know, I don't want to take uh, one of the kids a new generation spot. But if there is a spot that's you know that's not taken, I would I would go for sure. I would uh, I'll never I'll never back down from uh, from surfing some good waves with one other guy. That's for sure. Did you? Did, did, when is the last time you surf? Because I know you've been busy with your wife getting ready for the baby, and I want to thank you so much from everyone on the chat and everyone else who is in love with surfing for you it was a i feel bad uh anyway that i asked you to do this because there is a lot of pressure in the house when a baby is coming she can eat, the, the boys can pop up anytime so thank you so much and please 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 tell your wife that don't hate me we love you no, guys it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. well it's kind of taking off the pressure a little bit 
Uh, were you there yeah. for the birth of your daughter? We talk about, yeah, I was there. Uh, from one day, I was actually surfing in the Bells Beach uh, event, and uh, I lost my heat, and I took the plane that same night. I got I got back home the next day, and she had birth the day after. So it was really wow. close. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, Yeah. Do, do we know the name of the baby boy? No, not yet. Wow. Well, you have a short case for sure. Yeah, we'll see. It's all about, we'll see the feeling. We'll, uh, I'll see how he looks. <laughs> 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 and that's probably well, gonna keep you guys my... both of you are gorgeous i mean your daughter is like a, a bomb i mean I, i i bet she already she already started the day taishan dance correct yeah she's uh she's doing everything she does the taishan dance and then she does the ninja stuff and and she's she's like full whatever she's a she's a special character <laughs> Okay, so nobody found no nobody found it. This is so crazy. Christian Chopin, if you write quick, CK, that's not working. But anyway, you need to do like Steve Graham. Look, Steve Graham, this is what I want to see. I want wait, South Africa to Teddy. <laughs> Steve wants to play so bad. I'll send you the thing. Look, this is the kind of answer we need to make you win $500 gift of Cardo Snow. Uh, you can write this, you can have this. It's gonna it's it's cool technology. Go clip on your helmet. And you can ride either a bike or your snowboard, your skis. They're working on surfing and stand-up paddle. This is going to be a game changer when you're riding because when you, you ride, you can't talk anyway. So that's the answer I want. But with the correct answer, Steve Graham, Pipe Masters. That's a good one. Uh, Tavarua, this is Fiji, right, uh, Mimi? Yes, this is Fiji. And I wish I won that one, but I never won it. <laughs> Osogor. Yes, but we want the name of the spot. So not Osogor. South Africa, no. Uh, is that right that in South Africa, it's so scary at the beach, Marshall? Some of the surfers sometimes scratch because you see the big, huge white shark in the waves. Yeah, there is some big white sharks in South Africa for sure. But now with the new system of the drone and the security and the sounding system, uh, you can you can really see the, the sharks coming close to us. So they'll put the event on standby until the sharks goes uh, goes along and stays away and then they'll get the event back on well here we go another shark is coming Thierry Dopin thanks very much to the first invite of the new Pedret Garage Thierry who is uh, the French guy from Texas who is behind Writers TV and thank you so much for building this whole thing thank you so much Jeremy as well for pushing it and having all of us so nobody has won so far so I guess I'm gonna send not two sets to Jeremy but four for the entire family come on guys wake up wake up um, <laughs> Christian Chupin said Cunu au Segor la Nord quoi mais oui Whatever. <laughs> Do you remember Christian Chopin is a journalist from Stade 2? Uh, he um, did an yes. interview of you. You, you were know what? I, 16 years old. I think Hossegor uh, can work. I think if they say the name of the event, it should be fine. No? Yes. Doesn't have to be. Okay. So look, if you, right. that's it. So, so Choup, if you want to do this, name yeah. it all. Quicksilver Pro France, that works. 2018, that's the day. It's perfect. We're missing Pipe Masters, the first. We're helping you because we're not going to spend. And Jeremy, he needs to go now to be close to the daughter, the family, because the baby is about to pop up. So <laughs> hurry up. Uh, we want the four answer. Um, talking about Osegor, if I'm showing you this, brother, uh, does that ring a bell? Yeah, that's. I saw that. That was actually a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, I was. I was really, really. It was really emotional. I went back to France for like a week. And uh, there was a lot of, you know, like parties and uh, get together uh, for me, for my retirement, whatever, the, whatever you call it. And it was actually really amazing to spend time with my friend, my loved ones and uh, a lot of stories. And, uh, you know, this drawing was uh, was was beautiful. Was That's that, was that a full that surprise? Me. Sorry. Was that a full surprise? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Full surprise. I um, I remember. Someone told me, oh, go go check out La Gravière. And it was flat. I didn't really understand why. I knew there wasn't any waves. <laughs> well, because... And on, on the other side, there's actually a good drawing of one of my barrels that I got a, <laughs> my big scores in the final. So, yeah, a huge, uh, huge... This this painting has been done by uh, Rémi Bertoche, uh, yes. a, 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 a nomad artist and live performer. He did that in three days. That was a command from, I guess, the... Um, 
the French Surfing Federation and maybe Quicksilver, he had to paint this, listen to this craziness with the picture, a huge picture in his hand. And look, I have this. This is the Pedro Garage. Come on. Uh, he starts to draw with some Posca. He ruined like about like 50 uh, Sharpies like this and doing this from scratch. But not only, he used about like 20, I mean, 200 um, buckets of paint to do that. Wow. Three days, so much pressure because I guess there was an inauguration or something. Yeah, yeah. Remy is a great artist. Uh, he's done. I've seen a lot of his work. He's a great artist. And uh, yeah, it's amazing to see to see this. You know, I felt I felt special. <laughs> I felt like, you know, I felt, I felt really special. <laughs> Voilà, Rémi Bertoche, à qui on salue bien fort. We're going to say a few words in French. He's flying from Portugal. He's the one who shared that with me because when he saw on, on story on Instagram that you were in the garage, he wanted to send that to show his art. And he said that was the most amazing performance uh, drawing from scratch with a picture. But not only, if you go to a Sogor, this is going to stay for a while. This is actually on the sport. It's a perch when everyone goes see where the if there is like the swell coming in yeah yeah it's uh it's actually uh and uh, the blo uh, uh i don't know how to say that in english but it's uh, it's from like uh, uh world wars back in the day and there's still some left on the on the on our coastline in france and um i think it's a pretty good idea to that, that's not the first time that they've they've uh, they've put some colors and uh design on them but to actually have have myself on it it's it's It feels uh, feel, feels feels really special, and especially at La Gavière. La Gavière is a really special place, in, you know, to me, it's to my heart, and that's where I spend uh, probably some of my best barrels in my life. So, so yeah, it's it's a special place in my heart. Look, we're getting closer to the end. Nobody won the two sets. That's sad. So we're gonna help them and sending a video with a recap of your four wins. And it's going to be a freaking war. Riders TV, so cool to have this guy on the first Garage episode on Riders TV. Big hello. Thank you, guys. See? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, let me help you guys. Nobody found it, so I'm going to help you and throw some fresh dirt right there. Uh, with, I believe it's this. Let's watch this. And right after that, you should be jumping. We want, listen, if you just jump on the chat, Uh, you're joining the Pedret Garage with Jeremy Flores, the most iconic French surfer we had on tour and who win actually fourth of the main event, the fourth iconic waves on the world tour. This is what we're playing for. We're playing to win this. I'm just going to show you this really quick. That set, two sets, a value of $500. Uh, to answer those four questions in the same commentary. We want the four answers, and we're going to help you right now with watching. The way I grew up is always tell the truth and being honest. I think I'm really blessed with the life I have. Flores, <laughs> At 12 or 13, to me, he looked like a little Tom Curran. Jeremy's definitely been my favorite surfer to watch on tour. You want friends? Topu. Pipe Masters, twice. And the best one of all, my brother's award, Tahiti. Yeah, he speeded me out of the event. He's not scared to tell the judges where to stick it. He's been fine probably more than anyone on tour. You've had an amazing run, I tell you that. Now we can go on surf trips. Our dude. <laughs> so now you should have the answer really quick. Uh, we're about to kick off for um, me jumping on my skateboard with my son going to the skate park you jeremy probably going play with inahe uh jano said quick pro france osegor pat masters hawaii tehaupo kiwi d oh my gosh i need to put that on only jeremy is gonna validate this if you want it um so is the first one getting closer to the answer do you do you accept that or we're we waiting a few more Uh, Christian oh, uh, Chupin said Quicksilver Pro France 2019 Pipe Master 2. That makes three, brother. It's missing one. <laughs> missing one but... 
<laughs> so, so far, it might be Jano. But Jano, change some stuff a little bit. Change some stuff a little bit. You was that close to get the two sets. $500 value. That's unbelievable. Um, Jeremy, let's watch this together. Uh, recap of uh, the of the four plan on one of the best waves. And this is part of the answer. Look at this. When we say surfing is not a major sport, are you freaking kidding me? There is 20,000 people right there, maybe 40,000. And the wave of the Sport of La Gravière is like, like crushing, shore break, the best shore break in the state, maybe you say it. The best wave in France are in the land with Ostergor. Jeremy, I let you command those two days. Uh, that was a special day. This was the wave, this was my best wave in the final. I got, I got this one started and it got me going. I got a 9.9 something. And uh, yeah, to win in front of the French people, of this dreamy event in, in perfect wave. Uh, I mean, that's the kind of stuff you only see in movies, you know, in films. And, and uh, it had to, to have it actually happen to me, it was, uh, as a dream come true. Well, that's right. Uh, dream come true. I was in the garage. I was going crazy. The, 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 the neighbors the next day, almost called 911 on me and said, what's going on? I mean, we, we, we've been following you since like you're, I would say 12, 13 years old or something like that. And we, we were waiting for that moment. This event at home was like such a black cat for you, was so much pressure. You wanted this so bad and it happened. And it's not, it's not I mean, what I'm going to say, it's kind of accurate. It happened when you were a dad. Your baby yeah. girl was with, was Easy eating pain au chocolat on the beach while you were in the water. And maybe, maybe this brought you some calmness, what you needed to cool off. Yeah, yeah. Most likely. I think I think so. I think um I think having my family close to me and my uh, it was kind of in my head, I was kind of I kind of knew I was I was at the end. I didn't have the same passion, I didn't have the same motivation that I used to have. But I felt like I still had something in, in me, you know. I still had something uh, to to something big to achieve. And uh, to be honest, after this event, I wanted to stop. Okay, I think I've achieved a lot. I've achieved my dream. And uh, I actually on the podium before the podium for the Quick Super Friends, uh, I wanted to I wanted to say that I'm retiring, that I'm stopping. Um, And I, I actually told my girlfriend, I was like, I think, and she's like, no, no, just don't do it. Like, uh, just saying that, you might regret it. And, uh, and so I didn't. But for me, I was already done after this event. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, this, this was amazing. On the four events that those freaking people in the chat are trying to put together, they didn't have the right answer correct. We're going to help them. Which one makes your heart, like, if you have to... If I have a, a this magic stick is going to take you back in the timeline uh, to leave again and lifting the trophy, getting out of the water, that ceremonial uh, with all your friends lift, lifting you up, the French flag, La Marseillaise later on. I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you the question again and I'm going to help the guys, the garagist. Would it be uh, Pipe Masters 1, Pipe Masters 2, Te Aupo, Tahiti? Or Quick Pro? My favorite one, you're saying? Yeah, the one that you want to leave right now. I'm, I'm, I'm taking you back with the remote. Uh, for the prestige, the most prestigious one was the Pipe Master, but the one that I love with all my heart was the, the Pro Friends. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's it's feel like a it it feel like you were a Stade de France with all the audience. I mean, it was insane. It's like a, it's like in a football stadium, you know. It was like, like you said, it was like 30, 40,000 people on the beach. It was a sunny day. The wave was amazing. And La Gavia, what's what's amazing with this spot is it was breaking on the shore. So, uh, so we would finish the wave basically in the crowd. So, you, every after each wave, you could you could hear the ro the roaring, you could hear people screaming, and you know all the flags and having my family there and all the people that believed in me since day one, you know, my sponsors, Quicksilver and everyone. And um, that was like, that was a dream come true. Like I said, this is the kind of stuff you see in movies, you know, the stuff you see movies and you have like a, um, 
uh, you, you know, you, you have goosebumps when you watch these kind of movies and to, it's actually happened to me. I can't believe it. You know, like I could, like that day was as dreamy as you could get when you're, uh, when you're, uh, you know, when you're an athlete and when you're a professional athlete, it feels like all your life you work for this moment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, look, look at this. Um, we're, we're about to, to close that up. Hold on. Uh, the, the wrong window right there. Um, this is it. The feeling you were competing against the guy who uh, actually was Italo Ferreira, correct? Yes. Italo yeah, Italo was in the final and he was the number one. He was the guy to beat. And yeah. Italo is capable of big champion. things. And then he went on to win the world title. So to have, uh, yeah, to win against the best guy of the moment in the final, that's extra special. For sure. Look at those waves. La Gravia. We can be, sorry, there is two French guy and there is many French guy on the chat. Uh, I know there is big waves on the North Shore. There is big waves in um, uh, Tahiti for sure. But this wave is very, very particular. Uh, can we say a few words about the Olympics? Um, really quick, the, the experience. You were the very first French guy. I know we passed the hour, but um, do you have to go, Jeremy? Oh, we can, we can answer this question. Okay, um, uh, you were the first guy qualify on the on on the um, the Olympics for Tokyo 2020, which happened in 21. How was the experience? Because we're talking about massive sports, uh, massive uh, spots in the world, which is the North Shore, Tahiti, La Gravière, and many many more. But Tokyo was not is not going to stay in the book. <laughs> No, it was great. I think it's great uh, recognition to be uh, to have surfing in the Olympics. You know, the biggest sport event in the world. So to be in the Olympic is a is a huge recognition. You know, uh, you know, I did. For example, I, I, there's a lot of different opinions. I decided to to be a competitor. I decided to to follow that track, and and as a competitor, you want to be in the biggest competitive com competition in the world. And the Olympic Games is the biggest competition in the world. So it was a proud moment to represent your, my country, my, you know, uh, my island, uh, Rainian Island, to, in this huge event. The only thing is, unfortunately, the waves and the, um, weren't, weren't really happening. Uh, the, the show wasn't a great show. So um, uh, for, there's a lot of people that discovered surfing for the first time because surfing was in the Olympics. It was a huge job, and unfortunately, they might have discovered surfing in some really poor conditions. Uh, but maybe it might might have, might have given them, um, you know, uh, the choice to to really look into surfing and look at the real surfing, a beautiful image of surfing. And uh, in saying that, in 2024, surfing Olympic is going to be at the uh, at Chopo in Tahiti, and uh, that's going to be, you know, Chopo is the best wave in the world at the moment. So. I think people are going to discover this amazing, some amazing image, some amazing footage uh, of beautiful paradise, Tahiti, with some scary, amazing waves. So it's going to be extreme. And I think that's what people want to see. People want to see some extreme moment, extreme sports. And uh, But it was cool. Overall, the Olympic was a fun experience. I just wish the waves were a little bit better. And I wish, uh, I mean, I knew... I wasn't a favorite in these kind of condition. I knew, you know, I know, I know my, my kind of condition is not really that type of waves, but I did try my best and it was a good experience. Yep, yep, yep. You and Michel Bourez killed it. Talking a few words about Michel Bourez this year, he almost, almost claimed your trophy back home in Tahiti. Michel Bourez was in the final versus Connor O'Leary uh, from Australia uh, and the waves were not the greatest. And the Australian ODOD brought it home. Uh, was that a great, yeah, great actually, edition? Yeah, actually, uh, before I was there and in the press conference, they asked me who's going to win. And I said, Joan Duru or Michel Boez. Or, uh, and as a bonus, I said, Carly Vas. But actually, I was pretty confident and one of, one of the boys uh, was going to take it. But uh, Michel came close. He needed this result. So I think it's going to really help him on this requalification. Re re Um, and Connor Leary is a great guy. He's one of my really good friends too. So he deserves a great surfer. But yeah, I wish, I wish uh, one of one of my boys, you know, like Michel, won the event, especially because I won the last one. So it would have been great to keep the trophy home. But uh, but you know, 
Uh, it was a great result overall, and uh, I'm really happy that these two share a final because it, it two great humans, and uh, it's great for the sport. That's it. This is going to be the word. Uh, Paris 2024, Paris 2024. Uh, quick question in the chat. Somebody's asking, would that be possible to see you back for the Olympics? Because, you know, many athletes, I'm not going to name them, retired, and then look at me. I stopped TV and everything seven years ago. I'm back in the garage <laughs> and I freaking love this. If you're missing <laughs> so much, I mean, Kelly Slater is like what, like 50, 50 something, 50, 50, yeah. 49, 49, 49 years old. Oh, yeah. He's 49. Um, and he's still in it. And I, I'm, 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 I'm betting he's going to run for, it's not that far away, uh, qualification and everything. Would you? Come on, tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely I'd never say never. I'm, I'm, I mean, if there was, if it was anywhere else in the world, I would have said no because I've made my decision. But because it's uh, Chopo and because I've had some of my best performance and best result in my career on this wave, I feel like even in a, in a couple of years, I'll still be able to to put a, put on a good performance. So why not? I'll see how the qualification works. I'll see what's the the options. And if I have 1% chance of being in the French team uh, in the Olympics in 2024, I'll, I'll take it. Why not? You dropped the bomb. You dropped <laughs> the bomb. We're going to make l'équipe tomorrow. Jeremy Flores is back to Paris 2000, uh, uh, 2024. Well, we will love that. So we, I think we have a, a winner uh, of this game. And I do believe, um, do you see the comment? Do you accept yes. that answer? Jean. Jean won Jean it. of Chamonix. You Good just job. won this, my friend. Right, and this go. is going to be a game changer in Chamonix. The two sets are about to leave. And you can claim because I'm going to be trash talk in the chat and private messages say, you cheated, blah, blah, blah. No, that's the first guy who came closer to the answer. And this is it. And we decided that Jano, one of the very first garages, is going to have that set. And Jeremy as well. Thank you so much, Cardo Snow. To that revolution for having so much fun on a ride with friends and family. That's it. It's time to let you go back to your family with Inae. And uh, I never, never, ever be able to say the name of your wife, Inarani. Inarani. <laughs> Ooh, who used to be, uh, I mean, she was a runner up for Miss France. Is this where you met her? I uh, know I met her when she was uh, actually Miss Tahiti before she goes to Miss France, and I was uh, competing in the in the Chopu event, and she was doing some promotion and stuff, and that's when I, I met her. <laughs> wow! Uh, wait, not to be rude to you, is she more famous than you in Tahiti? Because yeah, Tahiti, yeah, I, for I sure. mean, uh, Mrs. Miss Tahiti is already a big deal, but you when you run for Miss France. She's, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. That's it's, it's it's pretty funny, but yeah, she's yeah. definitely more famous than me in Tahiti. <laughs> That's easy. Like they first see like Miss Tahiti and like, wait, wait, is that Jeremy Flores with her? Yes, it is. Well, what a cute family, you guys, with Inahe and now a baby boy coming up. We're exciting. What what is the due term? Right after the garage, <laughs> it's actually now the due term is now, so it can be any day. So it's uh, you know, we we can't wait, we're on standby. Voila, look at this. Jano from Chamonix say merci. Everyone is sending you love, guys. It's time to end up le garage. Don't forget to go see on Rider TV the episode with Tony Hawk. You missed the sets of Cardo, but we're about to give you away that board, Mimi. I'm going to try to get you one too, okay? I would love one. If you give me the name of the baby boy, I have Tony sign it here. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. That was Jeremy Flores live in the Pedret Garage. We're going to wish you, you, you're about to, I mean, experience again a burst. It's the most amazing thing on earth. Yeah, yeah. Baby boy. For sure. For sure. Please send all the love to the family. It. I haven't been surfing at all lately, so I wouldn't I wouldn't mind having a little a little sesh before the whole before the whole uh, burst thing happens. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna say thank you to all of you in the garage. Jano just won the set. 
Christian Chopin was been harding, uh, playing so hard, but you didn't make it. Uh, Steve Graham as well. Benoit Panidis, Riders TV. Thank you so much. Laurent Gay. Uh, who else? Who else? There is so many people that I, I, I don't want to miss anybody. Mathieu Standobé from Bordeaux. Every one of you guys sending love to Jeremy Flores. And Jano is saying, Jeremy, viens rider à Chamonix quand tu veux. Uh, tu es le ah, plus que welcome sir. avec ta famille. Uh, Chamonix, this is the place Super to be. Uh, Jano is, is the international shaper for the oldest okay. snow park in Chamonix. So, yes, you're in good hand. Voilà, Et voilà. Le garage is back, les amis. Thank you so much, Jérémy. Bisous en français à tout le monde. Bisous en français à tout le monde aussi. Parce qu'on va parler en anglais, mais. Vas-y, quelques mots en français pour la réunion. On t'écoute. <laughs> Bah, la Réunion et toute la France, parce que j'ai vu qu'il y avait énormément de Français qui suivaient. Donc, euh, bis à tous les Français. Merci à tous pour vos messages sympas. Et à bientôt. This was Jeremy Flores, guys. It's time to say goodbye. Jeremy, you know the end, right? That's it. Yes. High five. Oui. Nada. Voilà. Jeremy Flores est parti maintenant. Vous avez vu, c'est le retour du Pedret Garage sur Riders TV. What did I just sign for? We have a lot of going on on Riders TV. You want me to tell you? Well, if you didn't sign up for Riders TV, the Petrat Garage will be free forever. Yes, that's the good news. You will win gift such as what I just showed you. Um, you want to see again? So today, Mr. Uh, Jano is going to actually uh, look at this. Uh, I will do that. Voilà, add to stream. You want that two sets, bro, from Cardo Snow. And we're going to send a set as well to Jeremy Flores to ride bikes or do stand-up paddle. Thank you so much for watching Le Garage. Thank you for all the love. This is the beginning of a new adventure, guys. And thank you so much to all the crew of Riders TV. Et Danny Parzani qui vient de faire arriver. Welcome back to The Garage. Big up, Jeremy Flores. Uh, bravo Jano qui nous dit uh, that uh, Liberté Galité, uh, JPKR, the king of the burger that we're going to see on Nuit de la Glisse. Uh, Jano bees les amis. A lot of French guy. Where are you, all the people? Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. All of that, Mr. Jano. So good. Did you see the decor? Did you like it? Next week, let's talk about next week. You're going to get used to this hat, cat, because the cap. Um, I'm going to wear this a lot. I freaking love this. Yes, you can see my hair. It's kind of crazy. But I want to say thank you so much to my wife. She's actually the only producer from March 2020. She's the one who pushed me in the garage. Grab the mic and talk to you guys with amazing stories. Thank you to all my kangaroos over there, overseas. Thank you to Texas, Salt Lake City, Thierry Dopin, Nick Benson, Jessica Crisp. Simeon, everyone, go now on Instagram on Riders TV to get a chance to win the Tony York skateboard. But first, for that, you need to answer the question by watching the episode. Apply, it's free. The app Riders TV needs to be on your phone, guys. You're gonna see a lot of me. <laughs> so next week we're gonna have a special guest. We're gonna talk about surfing, skiing. Speed flying and with the director of Nuit de la Glisse. Let's watch that really quick. Would you mind? Okay. Woo! That was fun. Their achievements make them exceptional. <laughs> We should remember that their lives revolve around the seasons with moments as vital to our existence as a sunrise or a sunset. Beyond performance, what is important is their state of mind and way of life that brings meaning to their lives.
These are the dates. I am back in France, flying on November 17, Nuit de la Glisse, 15 amazing dates all over France and Switzerland. Go ndgcinema.com and we're going to make you win next week some uh, seats and hotspot as a VIP to come to Le Grand Rex or Cannes Palais Festival. Thank you so much for watching. You know what you're doing now? Do you know what you're doing now? Writers TV. Download the app and see you there.